Hi there knitters, welcome to episode 48 of Knit Talk with a Tech Editor. I'm Megan of The Unapologetic Knitter and I'm a tech editor. Today we are going to talk about making yarn substitutions on the fly. So let's say you're in a yarn store because we love going to our yarn stores and looking at the samples and there's a sweater that you want to make and it's done in worsted weight yarn. What if you decide that you want to knit it in fingering weight yarn? We're not going to be talking about how to modify the pattern itself. I have another episode that I'll link below so you can learn more about that. But I want to talk about how to make what I think of as educated estimates on the yardage you would need to purchase so that you can convert the pattern from worsted weight into fingering weight. So I'll admit when I received this question about how to convert from one weight of yarn to another weight of yarn in an email, it took me a long time to decide how to approach this. I have converted two patterns successfully in terms of yardage from fingering weight to DK weight. One was a beautiful shawl. It was very intricate um, lace work and I wasn't really willing to knit it at fingering weight and I found a beautiful DK weight yarn that I wanted to substitute and all I did was I bought one skein for one skein based on what the pattern listed. Um, but I also knew that because it was a shawl it didn't have to fit like a garment. I could knit until I run out or I could just knit until the shawl was the size I wanted it to be. Coincidentally, and I am truly saying that, coincidentally, the right number of skeins were purchased because just as the shawl was getting to the size I wanted it to be, I was getting down to my last half skein. So all worked out pretty copacetic there. The second project I did this with was Andrea Mowry's Big Cozy Cardi. The original was designed, again, in fingering weight yarn and I found a yarn that I absolutely fell in love with at my local yarn shop, but it was in DK weight. And so I quickly pulled up the pattern, looked at the number of skeins Andrea recommended for the size that I wanted to make, again, remembering that this was in fingering weight, and I bought that plus one, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> And I will say, I have one extra skein left over, but I also had quite a bit of yarn that I could use to swatch with. So I'm going to say that I have probably closer to two full skeins left over when I pull all the bits and pieces together of, say, a partial skein that I was like, oh, I don't want to use a partial skein to, you know, left over from my swatch to knit into the sweater. I want to use full skeins only. So when I sat down to really think about how best to approach this, I decided to knit up some swatches and start comparing them. So you've heard me talk about UU Yarns on this channel before. UU Yarns is owned by one of my knitting besties, Heather Walpole, and I love her yarns for so many reasons. But one of the biggest reasons I chose her yarn to, to work on this sampling is because I have it in every weight that she carries. She carries fingering weight, sport weight, worsted weight, and bulky weight, and I happen to have a skein of each on hand so I could approach this project with some semblance of continuity across the spectrum of yarns that I was working with. So what I decided to do was knit a swatch in every weight of the yarn. So I've got all four swatches, one in each weight, going from the fingering in the silver, I've got um, the sporty in the lilac, I've got the worsted in her black licorice, and her bulky in saffron. And what I decided to do was look at the ball band on every one of the weights of yarn, use the recommended needle size and knit up what would be approximately a four inch swatch based on that information. When you look at a ball band, you're looking for this information right here. So what this ball band says is that over four inches or 10 centimeters using a US 10 and a half or six and a half millimeter needle, you should get a gauge around 14 stitches and 17 rows. Now, obviously we know because everyone's gauge is unique, you may not match that gauge. My goal with this was not to actually match the gauge, but compare the amount of yards I would use in a certain square area so I could start to make educated guesses of 
how much I would need for one project or another when I'm changing weights of yarn. So after I knit and of course blocked all of my swatches, I weighed each swatch, measured the square area of each swatch and converted that into a yards per square inch conversion. I'm not necessarily gonna go through the steps of everything I did to break down the math, but what I'm gonna do is put my different charts that I created to compare yardages per project on my website so you can download each of them and take a look. I think it's a lot of information that um, you might find really helpful so you can start planning to do your own um, exercise in a similar vein. The comparison of the swatches was done to give us just a general framework of how much yardage we should look at getting to convert from one weight to another. So here's how this broke down. I wanted to take it from fingering weight to the different other weights and then from sport weight to the different weights. So we're gonna have four different categories um, because I used all four of Heather's weights of yarn, fingering, sporty, worsted, and bulky. Because she doesn't have a DK weight yarn, I did not actually knit a swatch using a DK weight yarn. It was really important to me to choose yarns that were all of a similar makeup, in this case a 100% superwash merino with a similar twist. Um, but I did take some sort of average amounts of yarn for a DK weight and have tried to apply it in the same way. So let's take a look at what I think of are going to be successful estimates, guesstimates, that you can take with you to a yarn shop and make purchases for yarn in different weights than what your project calls for. One quick thing I wanna mention before we talk about these percentages. Because every skein of yarn within a given weight range can have different yardage specifications. It's really important that when you take these percentages, you're doing it based on yards, not on skeins. So for example, um, within the fingering weight family of yarns, you can see yardages from 380 yards all the way up to 463 yards for 100 grams the skein to skein percentage is not going to be the same. So what we want to do when we're looking or when we're talking about these percentages is apply it to yardages, not skeins. So make sure you've got a calculator with you when you go to your yarn shop. There's one on just about every smartphone out there now, so it's pretty easy. And you'll want to be converting in yards and then figuring out how many skeins you need based on the yarn you wanna buy for the total amount of yardage. Based on my comparison of square area of swatches and yardage per swatch, I've broken down some really simple percentages to convert from each weight. So if you find a project in a yarn store that is knit in fingering weight and you want to convert it to a different weight, here's the percentages I would use. So to go from fingering weight to sport weight, I would say you'd need about 85% of what the fingering weight quantity calls for. If you want to go from fingering to worsted weight, I would say it's about 60%. And if you want to go from fingering to bulky weight, it's about 50%. If the project that you're looking for is in sport weight and you want to convert it to fingering weight, means you want to go lighter, I'd recommend getting about 125% of the yardage that the sport project calls for. So more yardage than what the project calls for. If you want to go from sport to worsted, you're gonna want about 75%. And if you're going from sport to bulky, you're around 65%. If the project is worsted weight and you want to go to fingering weight, you want to buy about 165% of the total yards. So again, more yardage. If you're going to go from worsted to sport weight, about 135%. And if you want to go from worsted to bulky weight, you want about 85%. All right, one more. I know we're going through these quickly. If the project is bulky and you want to make it in lighter weight yarns, you're going to have to buy more yardage for any weight that you're gonna convert it to. 
So from bulky to fingering weight, it's about 200%. From bulky to sport weight, it's about 160%. And from bulky to worsted weight, it's 120%. Okay, I know we went through that quickly. I will also make sure that that is loaded up on my website so you can go download this as a collective document. But you'll notice we didn't talk about DK weight. I did not have a DK weight that was of the same yarn family, so I decided not to knit it up. With that said, you don't have to use all of the same yarn family to do this comparison. I just did it because I knew it allowed me to find consistency across the entire line. So what I did for the DK weight, knowing where it sits between um, sort of a sport weight and a worsted weight yarn, probably even slightly closer to a worsted weight yarn, I did do some extrapolations and find a little bit of a conversion. Um, I feel less confident in these numbers, so I am only going to provide it provide you with a rough estimate of the original project being in DK weight and how I would convert it to the other weights. So based on some averages on my sport weight and worsted weight and knowing what an average put up of a DK weight yarn is, if you are working in a project that, or pardon me, admiring a project that's DK weight and you want to knit it in fingering weight, you're going to want to buy about 145% of what the project calls for. If you want to convert from DK to sport, you want about 120%. If you want to go heavier and go from DK to worsted, I would say you'd need about 90% of what the DK project calls for. And if you want to convert from DK to bulky, you want to use about 75% of what the project calls for, or pardon me, purchase about 75% of what the project calls for. So any of the percentages that I have shared with you today are obviously based on my gauge, a very specific type of yarn, um, and kind of an educated guess about how to approach this. Short of knitting the same sweater at a different gauge in every single weight of yarn, I can't really confirm how exact these numbers are, but I do feel confident that it's a good jumping off point so that if you went to a yarn store, saw a sweater in worsted weight and wanted to knit it in figuring weight, if you buy roughly the percentage that I've talked about earlier, you shouldn't end up with too much extra yarn or not enough yarn. If you are converting from yards into skeins and you're direct conversion says, okay, well, I need X amount of yards, which works out to be 10.2 skeins. Don't buy 10 skeins, buy 11 skeins. So with all of this said, and I'm almost done for the day, my strong recommendation would be to try this exercise on your own. Go find a skein of yarn in your stash in each of the yarn weights that you like to work with. Maybe you're never going to be a bulky knitter. That's fine, don't do one in bulky. Maybe you're like, hey, I live in fingering and worsted land only. I don't bother with sport or DK. Knit up the two swatches and, and use the information on the ball band to give you a jumping off point for needle size and just see what your weight, or pardon me, yardage per square inch comparison is and how you can apply that to a larger project. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have the spreadsheets that I use to figure out my yards per square inch and how I compared them across various projects on my website. So you can download that and get a framework of how to do this all on your own. I think it'll teach you a lot about your gauge, how it compares to that particular yarn company's gauge, which is always a fun thing to know, but it'll help you, you, make more educated guesses in how much yardage you want to do or would need to purchase to convert projects in different weights. Okay, so that's where we're going to leave it for today. If you are interest in, interested in learning more about um, how to estimate yardage for projects if you're making modifications, not necessarily changing weights of yarn, um, check out episode 10, which I will have linked below, and it'll just help give you a little more information about how to find your yards per square inch based on the swatch that, you, that we talked about making. 
As always, if you found value in today's video, remember to hit that like button. And if you're here and not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. It helps bring more people here so we can help more people on their knitting journeys. In two weeks time, we are going to take a look at how to work short rows in the yoke of a sweater if your beginning of round marker is not centered. It's a fun little exercise and I hope you'll come back and join me for that. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I always enjoy sharing what I know and helping you on your knitting journey. Have a wonderful rest of your week and happy knitting.